Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Fisheries Management Section Leader Scott Gangle. Today we're going to talk about fall fish reproduction surveys. Scott, your crews are just finishing up the surveys. What are fall fish reproduction surveys? Well, the fall reproduction surveys are done every fall on, on a variety of waters across the state, and what the guys are looking for is um, small fish. So we have smaller gears that are designed to catch small fish uh, to gauge reproduction and stocking success. Okay, so how are these surveys? You said smaller gear. How are they conducted? Right. We use traditional um, type of gill nets and frame nets and um, the, the difference between them and our summer surveys is that the meshes are a lot smaller so they're, they're designed to capture the smaller fish. So we're talking fish that are in that you know two to four to six inch range, maybe a little bit bigger or smaller depending on the species of fish. But basically we're not targeting the adult fish. We don't, we're not targeting to find out what the population is out there, but we're, we're looking at just the small fish that were either stocked this year or reproduced this year. You're managing a record high number of lakes, around 450. Do you guys do every lake every year? No, we, we don't have the, the manpower or time to get to every lake every year. We try to get to as many of them as possible. We, we hit the high priority lakes, you know, we hit the, the big three, Sakakawea, Oahe, and Devil's Lake for sure. Um, we do hit some of our, our mid-sized reservoirs like Jamestown Reservoir, Ashtabula, Bowman Haley, Hart Butte Dam. A lot of those mid-sized lakes th that are important to anglers, we do hit those every year. And then some of the smaller district lakes we hit on an as-needed basis. And by as needed, it might be a, a new stocking. We might want to go and see how that stocking did, or it might be something where we're looking at um, forage in a particular lake so we can try to decide what to stock next year and that sort of thing. So we hit as many of those as possible, but we can't get to all of them. Okay, what do you guys use the data for? Well, um, we do, we use it for a few different things. Uh, first of all, we gauge uh, reproduction in our lakes because it's called the fall reproduction survey to, because it's, it's designed to gauge reproduction. Uh, so on some lakes, like Lake Oahe, we don't stock anything in Lake Oahe. Uh, we gauge walleye reproduction and forage reproduction and other sport fish. The same thing with, with other, other lakes like Devil's Lake and, and Sakakawea. There are certain species that we do stock. Some years we take a year off from stocking, but they still have some natural reproduction. Uh, the other thing, too, is, is on a lot of our lakes where we don't see natural reproduction, uh, we gauge stocking success. We stock young of the year fish in there and, and we want to know how well those fish did. Did we have good survival of those young fish or not? And, and that really helps us to, to gauge that. Um, and then the third thing that we get out of it is since the, since the mesh is designed to capture small fish, we get a lot of information on the forage base out there, especially on a lot of our smaller district lakes where the forage base is fathead minnows and they're fairly small. We don't capture them in the summertime with our traditional gears. Any unique or high points this year? Well, the the highest point is is still Lake Sakakawea. That one has been um, good for a number of years. High water has always been a blessing there. We've had um, good reproduction of virtually every fish in the lake. Talking to the guys, you know, we saw we said we're going to have a pretty good take of walleye this year. We didn't stock very many fish in there this year. We just stocked the lower end and. And, and we didn't see really good stocking success from that, but we did see some good reproduction on the upper and middle parts of the reservoir. And overall, it looks like it's going to be another good year for walleye. Uh, but we also are seeing good reproduction of virtually every forage and other. We saw good northern pike re reproduction. We saw good smallmouth bass reproduction. Um, so all in all, I think Sakakawi is going to continue to be a high point. We had a lot of fishing pressure there the last couple of years, and people harvested a lot of fish. Um, but we've also had good reproduction now with the high water and that's not totally unexpected because of the you know when, when you have a lot of high water a lot of flooded vegetation there's a lot of nursery habitat for those young fish to hide there's a lot of food out there because there's a lot of insects that break down that vegetation so it's it's not totally unexpected right so the conditions were right habitat right conditions right. Were right the conditions were perfect for for good reproduction how are things looking at devil's lake scott well devil's lake is actually doing fairly good. Uh, we've had a fair to, fair to good catch of walleye there. Uh, it's probably tracking right close to the long-term average and we didn't stock it this year so that was um, pretty good natural reproduction up there. The yellow perch we were hoping for a little bit better of a, of a uh, spawn of perch this year but we actually got fair to good numbers of perch too but we were hoping for something a little bit more. We, we're about due for a good year class of perch and, and hopefully next year will be a, a better year. Any low points? 
Well, the lowest point still remains Lake Oahe. Um, honestly, we had a good reproductive event for walleye on Lake Oahe. We don't stock walleye on Lake Oahe. The reason that that's a low point is we've had three good year classes in 2014, 2015, and 2016. So there's a lot of mouths out there to feed, and we didn't see very much reproduction on, in terms of forage. Um, we don't have a lot of the smaller, more um, warm water forages out there like the crappies, the white bass, the yellow perch, and that sort of thing. Those all provide alternate forages when, when the forage base is suffering, and it has been for a number of years now. Uh, typically, we see a good year class of walleye every five years or so. They're very cyclic, but we've had three good year classes in a row. Those fish are, are out there. Um, anglers are seeing a lot of smaller fish in their catch, but there's not a lot of forage. So we didn't need another year class of walleye, but it looks like we may have gotten one. Um, it all depends on how they survive the winter, obviously, but we may have had another good year this year, and, and we're hoping for some, some better forage next year. We came into the spring, Scott, pretty dry. We were worried that water levels were going to go down. We got some much needed moisture. How are things looking as far as water levels on the district lakes? You know, we're still seeing a lot of the lakes that were dry this spring um, are still fairly low. We didn't, we didn't get enough rainfall to, to really bring those lakes up much. We had enough in, in certain areas to kind of maintain them. And that's, that's a good thing, but we're still kind of uh, Looking into the future, we could use some snow melt and some runoff to fill those lakes back up if they're going to be around for the long haul. Uh, some of those lakes, the ones that you're talking about are, are the, the prairie potholes, the ones that filled up after the, the heavy winters of 2009, 10, 11. Uh, those have, have started to dry out quite a bit. Some of them are down as much as six feet, four to six feet. Um, so they're kind of, you know, they're kind of at that point where if we lose too much more water, we might start to see some impacts to the fishery. If we get a good uh, runoff, it, it can help the fishery, but uh, by and large it all depends on, on what we see this winter and some of the rains that we got last summer were very spotty. Like one area would get a lot of rain and another area would get nothing. So it depends on, on how much we get this winter and where it hits to, to see how some of those lakes pull through. Okay, overall statewide from the lakes you guys surveyed this fall, things look pretty well? Yeah, you know, um, in terms of the smaller lakes, we've got lakes all over the state that uh, there's so many generalities that you could say, you know, some are really good, some aren't so good, but overall um, we're still seeing really good um, populations of fish out there. Our walleye are doing really well. This is kind of the time for walleye right now because we've kind of um, gotten past the peak of those newly flooded lakes where we had a lot of perch fishing and now we're getting into these lakes that we stocked with walleye. We're still seeing some good um, stocking success from some of those lakes. We're also seeing um, some pretty good um, growth of our fish this year. That's one, one theme that we've seen across the years is that uh, the sizes of those young of the year fish can vary quite a bit with growing conditions out there. This year uh, kind of seems like a statewide theme. Those fish are a little bit bigger than usual. And again, fish have to survive their first winter to actually recruit, what we call recruit to the population or be, become part of the adult population right. of fish. Uh, and that's usually a bottleneck and, and when those fish can grow well their first year, they, that really increases their chances. So the future is really optimistic for, for those fish to survive and, and recruit next year into the adult population when they'll be 6 to 10 to 12 inches long by the end of next growing season. Sure, a lot of good information, Scott. Thank you. For more information on what lakes were stocked with fish in North Dakota and what species of fish were stocked in the lake, go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. You will find a complete listing of all the lakes stocked. For Fisheries Management Section Leader Scott Gangle and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.